Well, welcome back to another exciting, hopefully about 10 minute video that describes one of the more significant projects for the course. Um, this one, the intention is to emphasize the development of the important responsibility to provide instructional supervision. Uh, that's always been the term in the literature that, in this sense, we're not talking about supervision necessarily in terms of the boss-employee relationship, but rather the deliberate, thoughtful, uh, conscious act of the educational leader to provide support for instruction, supervision of instruction. So um, I'm probably, as we look at the next slide, probably making a mistake giving such broad latitude on this assignment. And I teach an entire course at the doctoral level just on uh, certain elements of this instructional supervision process. So for us, we're just going to be doing a very small snippet that you're going to determine, and I'm going to give you the latitude to do that understanding again that when you get to your lab experience beginning this summer, for most of you, you're going to, over the course of a three-month period, you're going to be uh, theoretically and, and practically working with some group, some learning community in which you'll be um, in a much more um, consistent way trying to provide this instructional support. So we're dipping your toe in the water, I guess, with this project. But some of the things you could do is to do an observation of a teaching exhibition of a te teacher's class and then conduct a conference, that so-called clinical observation cycle. That may be difficult for some of you because teachers may be uh, reluctant to do that. You, know, you, you don't have evaluation responsibilities with your job, but you may have a colleague that's willing to let you do that because you're doing it for practice for this class. So it wouldn't be part of an official evaluation for that teacher, but it would give you the opportunity to have that experience. So that would be one option. Another option could be to conduct some kind of a walkthrough uh, process, whether it's a uh, within a department, whether it's within a grade level or even broader than that, you could identify some process uh, looking for certain instructional elements to collect data on that and then do some additional follow-up. That could be another way to meet the requirement here of this assignment. And certainly there could be other options that you could think of, but essentially what you're doing or being asked to do is to encourage, facilitate, lead efforts from teachers to improve instruction. So that's really the bottom line. That's the objective you're working toward. And a corollary element of this project is to work on the way in which you give feedback to a teacher individually or to a group of teachers. So another element of this is an expectation that you're going to create after you do an observation or after you do the walkthrough, you have to develop some manner, uh, presumably in writing, whereby you're going to give feedback to that group of teachers who participated in the walkthrough or that one teacher who was willing to let you observe him or her. So there's also that element of working on um, feedback, uh, providing feedback to teachers. So there's going to be two postings on this project where you're going to be asking for peer feedback. The first will be similar to other projects where you're going to say, uh, here's what I'm proposing to do. I'm going to use um, this walkthrough form. This form was developed by blah, 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 and we're going to be looking for blah, 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 and I intend to do it on this day, and I'm going to stay this long, and this is what I'm going to do. So you would be describing your process and put that out there to see if you can get, well, you, shall, you will be getting some feedback, warm, cool, and hard feedback from your peers. So 
one posting to get feedback on what you're proposing to do. The second uh, feedback is after you have done whatever you're going to do, walk through, observation, um, as I indicated on the previous slide, another part of this project is for you to practice presenting uh, feedback to teachers about instruction. It's very critical that feedback be given in such a way that it's useful to teachers or there's really no point in doing it, obviously. So uh, that's the second item. After you've done your process and you're getting ready to communicate something to the teachers, you need to post that so we can get some feedback about how you're giving feedback. And I would strongly suggest, again, because this is so broad, but I would strongly suggest that uh, when you do the small literature review that's part of this and when you're thinking about what you're focusing on when you are doing this, that you identify some specific uh, behaviors or um, supervisory elements that you want to see how well you do, such as if you're going to meet with an individual teacher, maybe you want to focus on how you're doing your conferencing. Are you effective at conferencing with that teacher? That could be a main part of your reflection and or a main part of your miniature literature review. Or you might want to focus on um, how well you're doing in terms of giving written feedback. That might be something that you would focus on. I'm trying to suggest to you that when you put this together, you make it clear that you're going to work on something very specific or pay attention to something very specific so that you have a focus for doing this. I've posted some resources, and there are literally lots of other ones that I could post or that you can easily find, but I've posted a couple of things now already uh, with this assignment as far as um, suggestions for uh, from the literature for giving the feedback and also for conferencing. There's a two-part rubric, not surprisingly based upon what I just said. There's a an expectation to score well on this. You show that you've been very reflective. And again, back to my strong suggestion that you identify something specific that you would focus on as part of that reflection. And again, as I just said, Maybe that's how you conference with the teachers. Maybe that's how you provide feedback to the teachers. Those are two examples. Second part of the rubric, you know, obviously it needs to be organized and a cl give me a clear picture of um, what you did, what you thought about it, what you learned, um, what you did right, what you might need to do differently, what you want to do the same, uh, but it needs to be uh, organized. So really to lead to the last slide here to kind of give a summation here, you're going to develop some kind of a process that shows you exhibiting some leadership in instruction. I strongly recommend you identify a few specific areas or behaviors that you'll be paying attention to. How did I um, interact with the teacher? Did I um, invite dialogue from the teacher? Was I too directive? Was I not directive enough? Um, you're going to post the process you're coming up with for some feedback. You're going to write some feedback to give to the teacher if it's just an individual teacher. You don't even have to give it to them if that's going to cause you a problem. But for our purposes, whereby we want to practice giving that feedback, um, you do need to, to, to post that so that you can get some feedback from others. And then as per the assignment, uh, which is outlined in the overview, uh, there are elements A through D that are uh, spelled out in the assignment sheet that should be addressed uh, in the final reflection that's submitted. And that includes, again, a very miniature review of the literature. So. I'm excited about this project. It's clearly, um, without question or argument, one of the most important elements of being an instructional leader is to be able to facilitate effectively 
uh, positive instructional growth, and that's what we're trying to give you a sample of here. So this is another one that you'll be building on and doing a lot more with in your lab experience. So hopefully this helps. Uh, again, I would say I know this is very broad, so feel free to try to define something that works uh, for your situation.